Hey everyone, this is Daniel from Phone Arena with the LG Optimus Net. It's your typical black and curvy low-end Android handset. Nothing really remarkable about the design. Uh, with a cheap uh, plastic look and feel. Not even soft touch plastic on the back like uh, on the LG Optimus One, which this uh, here Optimus Net is supposed to replace. The tapered edges, rounded corners do give it some more ergonomic uh, feel in the hand and its 3.2 inch screen is small enough for easy one-handed operation as you can see. The LCD display is 320 by 480 pixels which is enough for a um, low-end Android handset but means 180 ppi pixel density. It's just uh, borderline grainy but not uh, yet quite there. There's no ambient light sensor here on the front, also no front-facing camera and the 3 megapixel shooter on the back is not accompanied by an LED flash of, uh, of any sort. LG has given this uh, micro USB port here on the right hand side, this protective cap, which uh, honestly just gets in the way when you want to reach uh, the micro USB port and also the power lock key here at the top is uh, pretty small and hard to find when you want to unlock the handset screen. Let's uh, have a look at the Android 2.3 gingerbread interface with Optimus interface overlay on the LG Optimus Net. The Android 2.3 gingerbread interface here is overlaid with uh, the Optimus UI of LG which is basic but uh, pretty functional. The best thing going for it are these connectivity switches here in the notification bar which make turning the data radio or the GPS a snap. You have a bunch of widgets you can choose from of course including this uh, social one which is pretty helpful. Right here your Facebook, Twitter etc updates can be put uh, in a widget on a home screen. This uh, 3.2 inch display is uh, usually borderline uncomfortable to type on but on the LG Optimus Net the keyboard even the portrait one is uh, pretty well spaced and comfortable to type on and of course uh, it gets even better in uh, portrait mode all in all, no complaints about the virtual keyboard, despite that we have a 3.2 inch uh, screen size. The main menu is scrollable downwards with this uh, app category separator here, but you can change the layout of course into the usual page after page of uh, icons, icon grids. The 8 MHz processor is aided by 512 megabytes of RAM, which is a decent combo for Android Gingerbread, even when uh, a lot of apps are open at once. The interface is moving fairly quickly, but of course it's uh, a far cry from the fluidity that is supplied by 1 GHz processors and above. We have some additional applications here out of the box supplied with the Optimus Net, like this finance app here for following uh, stocks. And also we have Polaris Viewer, which allows you to view office documents, but uh, you can use it as a file browser as well. And since the phone has DLNA connectivity, you can use this application here, the Smart Share one for all your DLNA multimedia streaming uh, needs. Uh, this here Android Gingerbread browser on the LG Optimus Net uh, does the job, works uh, fast enough. You can pan around while zooming. It also supports text reflow as you can see. And the main drawback is that the Qualcomm chipset that's on the Optimus Net doesn't support Adobe Flash in the browser which kind of defeats the purpose of having an Android handset and it's the main drawback of the browser. Otherwise you can see fluidity is enough for basic uh, everyday browsing and it also has some nifty functionalities. In addition, to the default Android browser 
We have a basic music player without much uh, bells and whistles here on the Optimus Net. We don't have uh, equalizer presets, for example. You can stream the music directly from the music player via DLNA, but uh, as you can see, no equalizer presets or embedded song recognition services. And the loudspeaker uh, needs a little bit more volume. Video playback is one of the strongest sites of the LG Optimus Net since you can play DivX X3 videos up to this uh, 720 by 480 pixels of uh, resolution, which uh, is more than the screen resolution itself. So for watching movies, it's a decent smartphone. The camera interface has the typical Optimus UI we find in the company's Android handsets. There's no micro mode, but uh, there's night and uh, sports modes. And there are also a few effects you can apply to your pictures, color effects. The image quality, however, resulting from the 3 megapixel shooter is pretty bad. Uh, the pictures turn out dark, lacking focus and detail with uh, very often botched exposure and color representation. Uh, video capture is uh, done at 640 by 480 VGA resolution with 24 frames per second, uh, but it uh, had problems to achieve these frames. The clips uh, turn out too soft, uh, they're dark, lacking detail as well as the stills, uh, which adds to the bad impression uh, from the video's low resolution and the overall not positive impression uh, from the 3 megapixel camera on the LG Optimus Net. The LG Optimus Net doesn't really stand out from the sea of Android handsets and sets the bar pretty low even for the basic category. An inspiring plasticky design, lack of ambient light sensor, front-facing camera or flash for the 3 megapixel shooter on the rear don't help the cause to differentiate itself either. The biggest drawback is its camera quality. Pictures turn out dark, lacking focus and detail with uh, botched exposure and color representation very often. The handset surprises pleasantly with good video codec support though and plays DivX x videos up to 720 by 480p definitions right out of the box which is a very good feature to have. Voice quality in the ear speaker is with good enough volume, fairly clear sound on the receiving end. The sound from the phone's microphone is a bit weaker and people said we sounded that muffled. The fairly generous in terms of capacity 1500 mAh battery squatted for just 4 hours of talk time in 3G mode and 100 hours on standby, which is quite short by any measure for an uh, Android handset. The closest alternative to the Optimus Net is the Samsung Galaxy Y, which features the same cheap plastic shell and basic hardware but has a slightly smaller screen and a 2 megapixel camera instead of 3 what we have on the Optimus Net. Uh, for only a bit more money, you can score the HTC Wildfire S2, which uh, has much better looks and feel in terms of design, plus a five megapixel camera with LED flash. In the beginning, we were wondering if this one will be a successful replacement to the Optimus One, which was very popular. And the answer is uh, most likely not. It is just a minor processor improvement from 600 to 800 megahertz over the old model and comes way too late to the market where the requirements now are higher and the shelves are already flooded with budget Android handsets and most of them are better than uh, this handset here. This was a video review of the LG Optimus Net from Phone Arena. For more information about this and other handsets, you can visit us at phoneArena.com. Thanks for watching.